Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. God is crazy in love with you. Welcome to <laughs> Welcome to MCCQC, where our focus is on loving God and loving one another. I extend the loving kindness of Jesus to you today. Please rise as you're able and join me in our call to worship. Let praise to God resound in the heavens. Let praise to God fill the earth. Let all God's angels offer praise and rejoicing. Let all God's creatures sing praise and joy. Open your hearts and your spirits today. Let us praise the Lord today and always.
Thank you for supporting this faith community. Your giving matters as we tear down walls and build up love. Thank you for whatever you are able to do. Do you have any announcements? Jolene? Yes. Jolene, did you want to come up? Back by the door when I stopped 
got in the plot, and they're like, don't stop, don't stop, keep going, keep going. I'm like, no, 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 I gotta move on, I got a busy day. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Holy One, we breathe in your presence this morning. We remember our many humble beginnings and beginnings again. Thank you for never giving up on us. Show us, God, how to be gentle with ourselves, reminding us that this moment is always sufficient for our needs. Show us, God, how to turn our faces towards you like a sunflower turns its head to the sun. May we trust in your love for all our beginnings and endings. Together we pray in the power of your spirit for all those on our prayer list. Keep nudging us daily to do our part and to pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And now with just a name or a brief phrase, for what else shall we pray? My name is Sarah. <clears throat> the people in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. My son, Greg. Janet Watts and her family. Jerry, Fran. <clears throat> Alexander. Charlie and her pregnancy. Ron Forsyth. And Ed's son, Byron. Prayers of thanks for blessings you received. Amen. Amen. Thanks, David, Amen. for a successful surgery for Bob. Sarah and Claire's for crochet. For Elizabeth, healing from grief. A prayer of thanks to all of you and just for prayer in general for my good friend's daughter who was rejecting her heart. She is at the hospital now. She is at home. Mm -hmm. So God is good. May our lives, O oh Lord, be a spiritual quest, connecting us to all that matters. Amen. chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her beloved. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them as their God, and they will be God's people, and God will be with them. The Lord will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and even pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also the speaker said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then God said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life.
Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able. Hear this good news reading from John, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the child of God has been glorified, and God has been glorified in this. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Please be seated. <laughs> and praise. We pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our reading. Amen. Amen. So first, let's talk a little about the book of Revelations and then what the beginning and the end mean for us today. So the book of Revelations is often referred to as the Apocalypse of John. My seminary professor told us so what if you don't know what apocalypse means? Is it really the end of the world? <laughs> but he then went on to explain that while apocalypse has come to mean the end of the world, the definition and use of the term at the time meant the revealing of divine mysteries. And that's what apocalypse means, the revealing of divine mysteries. John wrote the book about 95 years after the death of Jesus. It was during the last years of the reign of the Roman Emperor Domitian. Now Domitian was one of the first emperors to seek to enforce morality. He banned actors, mimes, and sought to punish adultery. Though, of course, he was an adulterer. <laughs> and he sought to ban eunuchs. Though he himself had a favorite eunuch. For those who aren't familiar with the term, eunuchs at the time referred to anyone who was sexually different, anatomically different, or sexual preference different from others. Domitian promoted Roman religion, and toward the end of his reign, he began to persecute both Romans, uh, both Jews and Christians. 
Regardless of the extent of such persecution, John of Patmos lived and wrote during some very, very turbulent times. During John's life, the temple and all of Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in the year AD 70. To put it in our terms, imagine not just the 9-11 tragedy, but all of New York being completely wiped out. Imagine what that would do to the national psyche. Then in the year 80, Christians were banished from Jewish synagogues. And so this now totally independent Christian way was not unified. It was somewhat rudderless. And hence John of Patmos' letters to the seven churches in Asia. And John wants to give them hope, admonishing them to remain faithful to the teachings of Jesus and offer them a vision of a world turned upside down where Christians emerge victorious. The beautiful and sometimes shockingly violent images used by John in the book of Revelations come directly from the Old Testament books of Daniel and Ezekiel, books written during the traumatic aftermath of the destruction of the second temple in Jerusalem, and the forced deportation of the Jews from Palestine to Babylon. The phrase, what goes around comes around, applies rather well to the book of Revelation, both in its history and in its message. So John's writings are rooted in the knowledge that history does repeat itself. Having lived through the destruction of the, uh, of the temple and knowing of the earlier destruction of the temple. But John declares that in the end, good and right will triumph over evil. So God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The beginning is the end, is the beginning. The beginning is the end, is the beginning. We've all started over many times in our lives, in many different ways. And when we thought it was the end, it wasn't the end, it was the beginning. Our reading today comes from the end of the book of Revelation. A new heaven and a new earth replace the old. There's no more suffering or death. God comes to dwell with humanity in the new Jerusalem. The river of life and the tree of life appear for the healing of the nations and its peoples. It is a beautiful, hopeful, and compelling vision. Alpha and Omega. And yet so many people with questionable ethics and mental balance have turned the book of Revelations to spout manic pictures of fire and brimstone. So I have to tell you, it's a true story. Believe it or not, I'm at the dentist on Friday, and they just finished cleaning my teeth, and the dentist comes in. And before she says anything else, she sits down, pulls up her stool mixing, and she says, I need to make a confession to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then she tells me that she needs to apologize, because one time she was watching our services online, when her pet rat, I'm not making this up, her pet rat got on the keyboard and managed to hit 666 and enter. <laughs> she said she was so embarrassed that she just signed off, but she felt guilty about it ever since. <laughs> I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> The number of the beast, also called the number for humanity, is listed as 666 in Revelations 13.18. It's thought that the number is actually a coded reference to the emperor Nero, who was the first emperor to persecute Christians, and it was rumored that he would return. Some people take the satanic associations of 666 so seriously that they completely avoid all things related to the number 666 or even the digits 666. And the scientific word for this sphere is known as, and I'm not making this up either, hexacosio hexic, hexaconato hexic phobia. <laughs> Say that one 
<laughs> yes. So now you know, right? And yet, John of Patmos wrote, See, I am making all things new. A promise of blessings from God. So let us make all things new. And forget the televangelists and the fear mongers. Let's imagine anew the scripture unfettered by those who would manipulate the text for their own ends. Consider a world where all things are indeed made new. I think that's the world that we live in. Have you stopped to appreciate creation? Have you stopped to appreciate the buds of the trees and the flowers? And once again, spring is here and all things are new. Let us envision a world where death is no more. A reality where God's home is not in the clouds, but here among us. That sounds pretty darn wonderful to me. In the beginning was creation. And in the end, a new creation. One where we finally learn how to praise and how to share. That last one's a hard one. We, we're not very good at it. Human beings are, have trouble with that thing about sharing. I want us to start with that phrase right now. Would you please join me? in a responsive reading of Psalm 148. And I want you to feel the enthusiasm and excitement of the author of Psalm 148 as he wrote this. Yep, there you go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all the angels. Praise God, the heavenly hosts. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens, and you are so the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever and fixed their bounds. Praise the Lord from the earth, you see monsters and all beasts. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, fulfilling God's command. My mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, rulers of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young ones and eunuchs alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for our God is exalted, whose glory Alpha and the Omega. Alpha and Omega gain clarity when viewed through the lens of creation, as we just did. And they also come into focus when viewed through the lens of our reading from the Gospel of John. I give you a new commandment, Jesus says, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. And by this they'll know that you are my disciples, if you have love for each other. This is a world-changing love. It is a love that seizes us and jolts us out of our comfort zones. There's people that we may not really like, but we're called to love them. It's a radical kind of love. Placing us on the street with a God who wants to love us so powerfully and fully that this love becomes our identity. It's the way in which we are supposed to be known because of the way we love so completely. There's a Peanuts cartoon where Lucy stands with her arms folded with resolute expression on her face while Charlie Brown pleads with her, Lucy! You must be more loving. The world needs love. Make this world a better place, Lucy, by loving someone else. And at that, Lucy whirls around angrily, and Charlie goes flipping over backwards. <laughs> Look, you blockhead! The world I love, it's people I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people like that. <laughs> Clearly. 
and the glory to which we are called is a strange kind of glory. It's rooted not in our goodness, but in God's faithfulness. It's characterized not by success, but by servanthood. All of our desire for the things that mark privilege and success in this world are false gods. They threaten our ability to see the kind of life God in Christ has in mind for us. I like this story about a man named Horrible Sash. Horrible had a very humble job in the offices of one of the largest corporations in the world. He worked as the gopher in the lower reaches of the building, doing what he could to help other people do their jobs. But often he wondered and thought about the floor just above his. And then came a day when Horbo found a bug scurrying across the floor. As he raised his foot to flatten the helpless speck, the bug spoke, Spare me! Horbo spared the bug and was rewarded with a wish. I wish to be promoted to the second floor. And Horbo's boss told him that very day that he was. But Horbo heard footsteps on the ceiling of floor number two and Realized there's a third floor, a higher level, which would mean higher wages and more power. So Horval kept on working hard until he got to the top floor. But even then, he wasn't content. And he went up to the roof, and there he saw a boy near the edge of the building with his eyes closed. What are you doing? Praying. To whom? To God. Panic gripped Horval. Was there a floor above him? Do you mean there's an authority above me? <laughs> yes. The bug was summoned. Make me God. Make me the highest. And the very next day, Horval began work as a gopher in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> the Alpha and the Omega is a story that begins and ends with God's mission to create to love, and to serve. And God still works as a gopher in the basement of this world. God came to identify with the lonely, the outcast, the different, the poor, and the powerless. Our Alpha and Omega is to live like Jesus.
Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus lifted the cup, blessed it, and gave thanks, and offered it to his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the holy silences in our lives and for the messy, holy noises in our lives. Gather us now as a mother hen collects her brood under her wings. As together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Creator, in heaven and all around us, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now the good news of Jesus the Christ. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open arms. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. To enjoy this meal, it doesn't matter if you're a member of this church or of any church. This is your seeking communion with God. Whether you are ready to believe or not, God is ready to meet you here. And all are welcome. Our ushers and helpers will come forward.
your blessings upon it, God. Bless all that we have received and all that is yet to come. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the body of your spirit as you are able for our closing gift.
conviction. May the love of God, which is lavished upon you by Jesus Christ, be in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits as we go forth into God's world. Be bearers of peace and hope to all you meet. And may God's peace be with you until we meet together again. Yay, Jesus! Woo! Woo! Woo!